Welcome tonight to Coastwide Church and our Victory Bible Studies. Here we are Thursday night, going to speak to you once again about the reality of righteousness. Now it's such an important subject for you and I to be able to understand that God has made us righteous, not through our works, but through His works only, through what was accomplished through the Lord Jesus Christ in His death, burial and resurrection. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you once again for your word, that revelation, that faith, that uh, will grow in our hearts in a tremendously great way. That Lord, we thank you right now that we will manifest the life of righteousness through us, in us and with us. That Lord, everything that we are doing and believing is filtered through the understanding that we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not going to become it, but we are made it. And we thank you for it. I pray tonight that people will once again not hear my words, but they will hear your words in mine. We thank you for it. And Lord, we truly honor you for it. We bless you for it, knowing that in Romans it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we believe it tonight and receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So we've been talking about from last Tuesday night, righteousness. That righteousness was a free gift. I love that so much, that it's a free gift. It's, it's not anything that we in our lives have to do for it, except our receive Christ in our life. That's the only thing we can do. It's not because how holy we are and, and how good we've been and none of that whatsoever. It has everything to do with Christ and his sacrifice on the cross and his burial and his resurrection, bringing that blood of, of himself before the Father and, and sprinkling that on the mercy seat and the Father seeing that and accepting it and says, that's enough. I accept your blood sacrifice for all of mankind. And then we read that, that uh, in the Bible it talks about that it's a free gift to us. And what's a free gift? A free gift is one you don't work for. A free gift is one that is given to you freely. The price has been paid by someone else for you to receive that gift. So I'd like to go to Romans chapter 10 and uh, let's read from verses 8 through to 10. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So there is telling us right now how we can be saved. He's saying that, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, no maybes, no ifs, no buts, you will be saved. You can be in a plane flying over, over countries and cry out to Jesus and you'll be saved. You can be in a, in a boat in the middle of the ocean and cry out to Jesus and you'll be saved. You can be in the middle of a jungle and cry out to Jesus and you'll be saved. You can be in the middle of a desert somewhere and cry out to Jesus and you will be saved. That's the promise of God for everyone who cries out to Jesus. Now verse 10. For with the heart, now it's not talking about the blood pumping heart in your body. It's talking about your inner life, your innermost being. He's saying that for with your innermost being, one believes under righteousness. So you believe that you are righteous. And with the mouth, confession is made under salvation. So he's saying that you, that you by faith, you believe that you are righteous. So I was mentioned on Tuesday night at the start of the program, I talked about that, that, that understanding righteousness brings you and I into a tremendous place of victory. And that's where we need to come. We need to come into a place of victory. And, and I think you will struggle in your life to be believing about the goodness of God and the victory of God for your life if you don't understand this most crucial point 
that, that we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So important for us to believe that because that's coming, that's the foundational point of victory. And here he said this in verse 10. He said that, that, and, um, that one believes under righteousness. So you and I, we have to believe that we are righteous. Not by our feelings, not by what anyone else says, but by what God says in his word. He calls us righteous, therefore we are righteous. Righteousness, I remember I said on Tuesday night, that, that righteousness is just in it, to me in its simplest form, is right standing with God. You and I have right standing with God. Glory to God. Oh, the, 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 the connotations of that are just immense to understanding that, that we're talking about the big G God. We're talking about God, the one that created all of this universe, the one that created and formed man out of the dust of the earth by the words of his mouth. That God. You and I have right standing with that God. Hallelujah. That excites me that I have right standing with God. No matter what I've done in my life, no matter what I've said in my life, I have right standing with God. But so do you. Right now, wherever you are, sitting there at your dining room suite, maybe on the lounge chair, maybe you're laying in bed watching it, wherever you might be right now, sitting in a coffee shop, listening to this, you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that's a great place for you to shout amen right there. No doubt about it. So praise God. It's up to us to receive it now by faith, this free gift of righteousness. It's up to us. See, some Christians have said, I couldn't be righteous. I don't feel righteous. But you've heard me say it and I will keep saying it because I want it to get very solid in your spirit. He's saying this, your feelings have nothing to do with it. The Bible says you're righteous regardless of how you feel. Because see, your feelings, if you're living by your feelings, they will rob you of the blessings of God if you continue to base your faith on your feelings. Don't base your faith on your feelings. Base them on the pure Word of God. See, some people seem to think they're humble by saying they're not righteous. Oh, I could never be righteous before God. And they think they're being humble by it. That, that's not humility. That's just wrong. It's totally wrong. There's no humility. See, a truly humble person will be saying what God says. They will be yielded to God and His Word and they're yielded to what the God says in His Word. That's true humility right there. The, the truly humble man will say this, I know I don't look righteous and I don't feel righteous, but the Bible says I'm righteous, therefore I'm righteous. Therefore I have right standing with God. No matter my feelings, no matter what's going on in my life, I am righteous for no other reason than God said, I am righteous. So we have to develop this righteousness consciousness, a righteousness thinking, a, a righteousness believing that that's what we are and who we are. See, that then creates a, a, a thinking and a pattern of victory in our lives. Because if we understand I've got right standing with God, then we know that He loves me. We know that, that He's going to be kind and merciful to me. And we know that He's going to bring victory into our lives because I have right standing with Him. If we didn't have right standing, then He's limited in what He can actually do for us in and through our lives. Some will say, Ah, oh, yeah, but, but Jesus, well, I can believe that Jesus had right standing with, with the Father because He's the Son of God. Yes, He was. But so are you. You, through faith in Christ, have now become a son slash daughter of God. See, you're in his family. You're part of his family. So why wouldn't you be righteous? 
Why wouldn't you have right standing with God the Father? You should be just as aware of your right standing as Jesus was. You, you never see where, where Jesus came before the Father and he was, he was like, oh, I'm so unworthy and I don't belong here. And you never, ever, ever saw that, nor will you ever see that. Because that's not how Jesus thinks. He understands this, that he has right standing with his Father. You and I, who are in Christ and Christ in, in, is in us, that gives us right standing with the Father, made righteous. We begin to live in total victory as Jesus did during his earthly ministry. So let's go again to the Word of God and we'll find out in the Word how we can develop this righteousness consciousness or this, this righteous kind of thinking. Let's uh, come with me over to the book of uh, Hebrews and we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1 to 4. Every time I think of the, the book of Hebrews, I, I just think what a great name that is for a coffee shop. Hebrews. Anyway, that's just me. Here we are in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through to 4. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things that can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. They couldn't do it. The, the sacrifices they offered year by year by year, it could never make them perfect. Matter of fact, all it did was it covered their sins for another year. But see, we, we're not under that first covenant anymore. We're under the second covenant. And that says that our sins have been washed away, never to be remembered again. Oh, glory to God. Our sins have been washed away, never to be remembered ever again. God will never bring your sins up before you again. Never. Never do that. Let's go on. Verse 2. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. They not have ceased to be offered. For the worshippers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year. But it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats could take away those sins. From this we, we, we understand this, that the sacrifices offered under the, under the first covenant of the law, they could never do away with sin. Sin was always there, just covered. The blood of bulls and of goats could only cover, or the word in the Old Testament was atone. There was an atonement for sin, just a, a covering. The, the blood would cover over those sins. Still there. It's like you might have a boat and you put a covering over the boat. Well, that covers the boat, but the boat's still there. And, and that's what it was like in that Old Testament. And, and so the thing is that now, in, in this new time right now, they're saying that in the old, the blood and the bulls of goats could never do away with sin. And yet, you and I are now forgiven. You and I are now being washed clean. That, 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 that's this righteousness, this outworking of righteousness in our lives. That it washes sin away and makes us brand new before the Father. And then he says, hey, come on, come on, come, come on, come, come in, come in to my presence. Come on in to my throne room because you are righteous. You are righteous. It gives you a right to come in. See, uh, uh, Susan and I have a son and two daughters and four grandchildren. And, and none of those 
None of those uh, son or daughters or grandchildren, none of them come and knock on our door and beg us to come into our house. They, they don't stand and say, please, please, will you, please, will you just, Dad, will you just let us in to your home? No, if the door's locked, they'll come and they'll knock on the door and we'll open it and they just walk right on in. Why? Because they know they have a right to be there. They know that there's no issue with them being there. They know that they can come just right on in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what the Bible's telling you and I. It's telling us that we have this right to come before God and believe Him for victory in every area, in every aspect of our lives. Because that's what the blood of Jesus Christ has accomplished for us. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 9, and we're going to read from verse 11 to 14. Hebrews chapter 9. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living Christ. How much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, how much more shall that blood obtain eternal redemption for us? Wow. Come on, think about that for a moment. Think about what this blood of Jesus Christ has done. It has obtained eternal redemption, redeemed, bought out of that old lifestyle, out of that old sin-natured world and brought over here into the kingdom of God that we're now in the family of God forever and ever unless you want to walk away from it, which I hope you would never do. But having a righteous conscience, having an understanding that, that, that we are accepted totally and completely in there. Did, did you notice this, that the blood obtained eternal redemption? Eternal. Blotting out, the, it says in the book of Colossians, it says blotting out the handwriting, blotting out the, the, the handwriting of ordinances, ordinances that was against us. Blotting them out. You know, in the olden days, if a man or a woman couldn't pay their bills, what the, the person that they owed the money to would do, they, they would come and they would, uh, would uh, write all of the, the uh, uh, monies that they owed out on a piece of paper and they'd write it all out, you know, owed a grocery bill of X number of dollars and write it all out and then they would take that and they would nail that on the doorpost of the people's house. And then another man coming by, he could read all of those things and he could look at it and he could go, you know what, I'm going to pay all of that and then this, this, this family will then become my servants. And so what he would do was he could write his name on there and then he would take it and he would fold that paper up and renail it to the door. Now when anyone came past, all they would see was a blank piece of paper. Great impression or a great, uh, a great picture of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done. He took all of our sins and he could write them all out like that. And then he could look at it and he'd go, I'm going to pay the price for all of that. And then he signed it in his blood, folded it up, that now no man could see those sins any longer. 
all men, all men now could look at and was go, wow, wow, they're, they're, you know, that's all been paid. That's all been paid for. And that's what Jesus did for us. And to me, I, I could imagine him doing this, writing on the front of that piece of paper, righteous, righteous now. They no longer owe, they're righteous. It's been paid for in full. That's you and I. And that's the kind of, of uh, consciousness, that's the kind of thinking that we need to have in our lives so that when we think that way, we can actually live in victory. We can, there, there's, no, there, there's no sin consciousness about us that, that stops us living in victory. There, there's, no, there's no prayer that we prayed. God, if I'm worthy enough, God, if only I was worthy enough for you to bring victory in my life, you'd never pray a prayer like that again. If that thought ever came to you, you would, you would break the power of that thought so quickly because you know you're righteous. See, it's like, it's like Susan and I, we own our own home. We, we, owe, we do not owe one cent on our home. It is completely, totally our home, paid for in full. And so if someone came and, and uh, knocked on my door and said, uh, Mr. Cunningham, I said, yes, uh, uh, you're residing here in, in, in your house. And they go, yes, uh, I am. And, uh, and he said, well, uh, you need to pack and leave because I'm taking over your house. I go, say, well, by what authority? Are you taking over my house? Well, I, I'm just taking over your house. You have to leave right now. You have to pack everything and leave immediately. I'm taking over your house. Would I just stand back and just go, well, okay, yes, sir, and go and say to Susan, honey, we, we need to pack everything up immediately. Uh, someone is taking over our home. Now, now, that sounds really, really ridiculous, and it is. It is. But yet the trouble is, that's what so many Christians are doing with their life. The devil comes along and, and says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this sickness or I'm giving you this poverty or, or I'm going to uh, destroy this relationship and that. And, and we kind of go, oh, oh, uh, oh uh, okay. And you accept it. Because you don't understand the right place that you have with the Father. You don't understand that you are right with God and that if the devil wants to deal with you, he's got to deal with the Father as well. Oh, come on, listen to this. If the devil wants to deal with you, then he's got to get through the Father because you're in right standing with the Father. Because someone who is in right standing with another, it's called covenant relationship. Then what that strong person, what that person has, you have. So what the Father has, I have. So the devil comes along and he says to me, I want to give you this sickness, I want to give you that. I go, no thanks, no, because see, I've got a covenant with my Father. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I'm not going to accept that. You want to take over my home? You're going to have a fight on your hands because this is my home. Uh, my, Susan and I worked hard for it, believed God for it, and God has blessed us with a wonderful home. That's our home. Nobody, but nobody is taking over our home. And that's how we need to be. Because see, we know that we have, we have the, the, the uh, deed of title is in our name. It's not in someone else's name. The, the deed of title for that house and land is under the name of Shane and Susan Cunningham. So we're going to fight for it because it's ours. When you, when you know your position of righteousness with the Father, then I tell you, victory is assured because on the inside of you, you're going to stand up and fight. You're going to say, no, no poverty, no sickness, no disunity, no in the name of Jesus because I have right standing with my Father. I have covenant relationship with my Father and, and He's going to fight for me and He's going to be on my side. Glory to God. I hope you heard that. If you missed that, you need to replay and go back over that again. Is that we've got to put away all of the sin tags, all of this stuff. You know, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. 
Oh, that's like one of the most stupidest things I've heard Christians say. Oh, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. You might have been an old sinner, yeah, but you're not any longer. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Right now, you, you have been made righteous, a covenant of relationship and righteousness with the Father. So don't go around with all this, you know, oh, I'm just being humbled. No, you're not. That's not humility. I have another word I could use for it, but I won't use it at this moment. We're going to purge our conscience from this dead work thinking to understand and to realise that on the inside of us, we've got the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, made righteous, made right standing with the Father. That we can come to him and say, hey, Father, the devil's been trying to do this and this and this. What, what, what should I do? And he'll lead us to his word and he'll say, put that word in your mouth and in your heart. And when you do, I'll watch over it to bring it to pass in your life. But an unrighteous thinking person can't do that. Oh, if only I had this right standing with God. Well, let me tell you, you do have right standing with God the Father. And I believe that it's about time that the body of Christ started to not only believe it, but started to live by it, started to do what the Word of God says. You've been made righteous, then come to the Father with that understanding and that thing. Not arrogantly or in a smart aleck way. No, 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 no. But coming humbly before him and saying, Father, I thank you. I've been made righteous before you. And now, Lord, I've got some issues here I need to just talk to you about. And he'll listen. And he'll give you the answer and the key to your victory. Come on, we're living in a day of victory. We're living in a day of new anointings for your breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. That's 2022, a year of the new anointing for breakthrough. It's time for breakthrough. And one of the first keys is understanding that you have been made righteous. Hey, I want to pray for you right now as our time has gone again tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone. Everyone has been listening to this message. God, help them, bless them, encourage them, Lord to understand fully that they've got right standing with you. And so, Lord, I bless them today. I declare blessing upon their lives in everything that they put their hand to in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, Father, we thank you for the book of Corinthians that says that we walk by faith and not by feelings. We're walking by faith in the Word and not how we feel in the flesh. We bless you for it. We honour you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, God bless you. Really, Susan and I just love you so very, very much. And, uh, and we believe in you and we believe that your victory and your breakthrough is just right there ready for you in Jesus' name. Hey, enjoy your weekend. If you're not uh, able to get to church on Sunday, we'd love to see you online, 9 a.m. Australian time, 5 p.m. Uh, Australian time as well. God bless you. Enjoy your weekend. Goodbye.